everybody and welcome back to Sunshine and Serenity and today we are getting uh, a lot of kitchen work done. Uh, today I'm doing uh, a lot of canning. I'm going to be doing some apple pie filling. I'm going to be doing some uh, pear sauce and uh, some other things. I'm also going to be uh, showing you that second part of infusing the uh, goldenrod in oil so i think it's finally dry and i think i can finally uh show you guys uh the second part of that process but uh if you are new here thank you for stopping by and checking out our channel if you'll take a moment hit the like and subscribe button it helps our channel grow and if you are a returning viewer welcome back we are excited to have you back with us once again uh, as we show you how we are uh, doing on our very first homestead journey so if you guys are interested in seeing what kitchen projects we are getting done this week uh, stick stick around stay tuned because uh, we are gonna put some footage in here of what we are doing okay so the first project that I'm gonna be working with that you're gonna see a footage of in the kitchen is we are going to be taking these two bags of apples and we're gonna actually be turning this into apple pie filling so the very first thing that I have to do is I have to get these in the sink and get them washed okay so now that I have these all washed, uh, I'm going to get them all peeled and uh, cored and sliced up into uh, slices. And uh, I'll show you guys what that looks like after I get it done. I do have a hand turn uh, peeler where it'll actually peel everything for you. But I can't find it at the moment and it'll be just my luck. I'll find it when I don't need it anymore. So I'm going to have to peel all these by hand with my hand peeler. Uh, so it's going to take quite a minute, uh, but once I get those done and cored and sliced, I will show you guys what that looks like. Okay, so now I have got all of my apples. Um, we got them washed, we got them peeled, we got them cored, and I got them chopped and or sliced. So you can see that I had about 20 apples or so, and this is what it gave me. Uh, so now the next step is going to be start cooking everything that I need to cook uh, according to my recipe now uh, you can uh, I, I just google use a recipe that I googled uh, apple pie filling for canning and it uses uh, clear gel uh, sugar water things like that you get it all mixed up then you cook your apples in it and then you're just gonna can it up so I'm gonna get everything uh, cooked up and going and then I will show you what that looks like and then we will get these canned okay so this is what we've got going I've got the um, mixture in here for the apple pie filling. We're just cooking it on medium until it gets nice and thickened. And then in this pan, we have uh, all of the apple peels and the cores and what we're, and we covered it with water. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna end up making apple scrap jelly out of the peels and the cores. So nothing goes to waste on that. And next I'm gonna get started on some okra. Okay, so while I am waiting on that apple pie filling uh, to thicken up, and while I wait for the apple scrap jelly, uh, with the water and the apple scraps to come to a boil, I am actually going to go ahead and take care of this okra. I'm going to go ahead and get it canned. Now, I can my okra using the open kettle method. Uh, this is uh, something that I learned from old Alabama gardener um, who is no longer with us. But um, this is how I can all of my okra for frying. So if you're cu curious about that, pop on over to his channel and he has a whole video on uh, canning both squash and okra using that method for frying. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get all this okra washed. I'm gonna get it cut up and ready to uh, go into jar or go into the mixture to uh, boil and cook. And I'm gonna get that done while I am waiting. Okay, so I have got my okra completely chopped as you can see there. I'm waiting on the uh, mixture to boil. It's a mixture of water, apple cider, apple cider vinegar, and salt. And once it starts boiling, I will then add my okra, boil, uh, bring it back to a boil, boil for eight minutes, and then I will uh, put them in hot jars um, and put the lids on them and let them sit to seal. And then uh, my apple pie mixture is almost thickened, so I'll show you what that's with them. Okay, so it may be kind of hard to see because I got steam, but it's my apple pie mixture is getting thickened, so I added the lemon juice, and then now I'm just about to add the apples. And I will get, cook those for three to five minutes in the mixture, and then I will pack them into uh, hot jars, leaving an inch of headspace, and then I will process them. 
And then my apple scrap jelly is boiling. I'll let that boil until the water reduces by half. And I'm waiting on my other mixture to boil. Okay, so now that I have my apple mixture already in here, and I'll kind of show you what it looks like, but that right there is what it looks like. It's uh, apple pie, uh, apple slices and the apple pie filling. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fill each of these jars up to the top, leaving one inch of head space. And then I'm going to get lids and rings on them and get them in the canner. Okay, so I have got all of my apple pie filling in the jars. I ended up getting six quarts and one pint. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fill my canner now with these and I'm gonna process them in the uh, boiling water bath canner for 25 minutes and then we'll take them out and I will have pie canned apple pie filling already ready for this fall and this winter um, each one of these jars will probably make two pies if I split it in half between the two pies so all in all that gives me um, you know like 13 pies or so um, with this filling so that is just a really easy way to already have this on your shelf ready to go all you have to do is make your pie crust uh, dump it in and bake it and it's really handy during the holiday season so uh, we're gonna get these processed and uh, yeah that's what we did today was apple pie filling I'm working on my apple scrap jelly which I will show you when I get that finished and then I did get two pints of okra out of that batch of okra that I cut up and so I got two pints of that and then uh, I will also show you the second part to getting the goldenrod infused in oil. So stay tuned. We have got all those projects coming up this week uh, and you will get to see footage of all of that. But this is just what we did today. So obviously this is a different day so it's going to be several different days worth of kind of splicing things together as I'm doing kitchen work, uh, preserving things, things like that. Um, so there's going to be a couple. So obviously it's a different day, different outfit, so, uh, but same video. So um, I had mentioned to you guys that I was waiting on, in my last video, I was waiting on this um, goldenrod to dry. And so it finally did dry um, to where I feel confident in putting it in the jar. Um, to infuse into some oil. So this is what it looks like completely dry and you can see very different from when it was freshly picked. So what you're going to do is anytime you do any type of medicinal uh, infused oil is you're going to take your herb and you're going to stick it into your jar or container. You may have to bend it a little bit and then you're going to cover it with an oil. You can use olive oil, you can use coconut oil, you can use sunflower oil. I'm actually using a uh, mix it's sun cocoa um it's organic sun cocoa um oil blend and so this is what i'm going to submerge it in and then once you get it in your jar and a lid on your jar you just set it in a windowsill a sunny windowsill let it infuse for several weeks up to several months and then um you use it to make your salves or whatever you want to do with it um but yeah so that's what we're doing today so this is my oil and i'm going to put it in this jar All right, so now that it's in the jar, you can see it's in the jar, um, and I'm going to go ahead and basically cover it with this sunflower and coconut oil. Lid on that, and that is what that looks like. As you can see, uh, the herb is completely submerged in the oil, and then we're just gonna set this in a sunny windowsill and let it just infuse. So um, that's how you do herb infused oils and then again you can later take this and make your salves uh, you can use it as the medicinal oil like as is um, so lots of different uh, things to use this for just remember it will stay good as long as your herb is still in here the second you take this out and strain out all the pieces um, you have to use it within a certain amount of time or it can cause it to go rancid because um, obviously something happens there chemically to where um, that happens. So um, anyway, so that's part two of the goldenrod. So I'm gonna set this in my window still to infuse. And then the rest of the goldenrod, I'm just gonna dry to use for herbal teas. Uh, but yeah, so that's how you do herbal infused oils. I also wanted to show y'all an update on my apple scrap jelly. So I didn't get very much because I uh, didn't fill it with a whole bunch of water, but uh, I ended up getting uh, one half pot or I guess one jelly jar and one 
of the smaller jelly jars so um, that'll leave us one for us and then a friend of mine uh, wanted to uh, try some so I've got a jar for her there um, so yeah so next time I get more apples I'll be sure to uh, fill it with more water so that that way in the end I get more jelly because it does cook down quite a bit after the process but anyways uh, that is how the apple scrap jelly turned out all right so uh Thanks for tuning in to uh, the kitchen projects that we did this week. Uh, we will be doing more kitchen projects, so stay tuned for the next video. It'll have all of our next week's uh, worth of kitchen projects that we will work on. I've still got some pineapple to preserve. I've still got um, pears to preserve. I've still got some more jelly to make. I've still got to do something with all of the tomatoes and the peppers that we got from this harvest season in the freezers. So I've got to do something with those. Uh, so as we're getting into fall, a lot more of our content will be about the, um, basically the prep work or the, um, what we're doing with our harvest because a lot of my harvest I will put off until the fall winter time when it's not so crazy and it's not so busy so like my tomatoes and my peppers we freeze them and then I just work through those and process those in the fall time when I have a little bit more downtime so uh, stay tuned for that we will be uh, doing more projects I will also be doing um, some planting too I'm going to do some fall planting uh, in the area that I have for this year um, the next year we're going to be building hopefully some more um, raised bed garden areas so hopefully I'll have a lot more planting space come next year but since this was our first year on this property um, there's not a ton uh, that we had ready and we just had to work with what we had and so as the years go on we'll be able to add more and more and it'll be able to be more expansive than it is this year um but thanks for uh staying with me uh as always hit that like and subscribe button drop me a comment below let me know where you're watching from let me know what you're doing to prepare for the fall and winter season uh what projects you're working on um let me know what you guys are up to so um until i see you guys next time y'all have a wonderful and blessed week and i'll see y'all next time friends bye